good evening everyone, welcome to Melbourne Baptist Church and uh, to our baptism service for Poppy. Uh, Poppy, would you stand up and wave at everyone? Let's, let's give her a welcome, shall we? It's amazing you can sit there. So, Poppy, after this morning's service, came up to speak to me uh, with her sister and said, I, I'd like to be baptised. And so I said, that's great, we can fill the baptistry really quickly, come back tonight and uh, be baptised. And then she said yes. Uh, I didn't know that that would happen, that's rather exciting. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. We're going to sing, uh, we're, uh, we're going to hear your testimony, uh, then you're going to be baptised, then we're going to sing again. Uh, I might share a word, I might not share a word, it basically depends how the evening pans out for everyone. Uh, but to start us going, I'm going to read from God's Word, and I'm going to read from Psalm number 24, and then we're going to sing our first song together. Uh, if you're able, can I invite you just to stand while I read the psalm? And then we're going to sing together our first song. Wonderful. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For the foundation, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. Right, uh, I'm going to read to you from Ephesians now. Uh, this is I I Ephesians 2, I'm going to read from 1 through to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the way of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, and following its desires and thoughts like the rest. We were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isn't that a great thing to know today? Uh, that our, our salvation faith is not because of anything that we have been able to do, because if we have a proper understanding of ourselves, we know that we could not possibly arrive there ourselves. No, it is through God's impetus. It is through the inspiring of the Holy Spirit. It is through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And therefore not a single one of us can boast. Because it is all from him. It is all through him. And therefore our lives need to be all lived to him. And isn't it wonderful that as a visual sign of that transformation, Poppy is coming to be baptised today? Isn't it wonderful that she is demonstrating when she goes down into the water that life that was lived to the flesh is going to be put to death so that she might be raised with Christ and in that way be with Christ in the heavenly realms? 
knowing that that's not because of our own strength, but it's because of His strength. Isn't it wonderful today for any of us who have already been baptised that we can remember? It had nothing to do with our decision and everything to do with God's goodness. You are beloved children of an almighty God. He is the one who put this into action. And he loves you. He loves you, Poppy. He loves you. He absolutely loves you. You are his special girl. You are his precious daughter. You are no longer an enemy to God. You've been welcomed at his table. You're part of his family. And he says, this is my girl and I'm proud of her. When Jesus was baptised... What happened when he came up out of the water? The Holy Spirit descended upon him in the, in the image of a dove and a voice from heaven spoke. We see the Trinity, God the Father, God the Spirit, God the Son. A voice from seven, uh, heaven spoke and it said this. This is my Son with whom I am well pleased. That's right and that is definitely that, well pleased. Okay, this is my Son with whom I am well pleased. A friend, Poppy, when you come and you come about this water, let me tell you, God is looking upon you. And he is saying, there is my girl with whom I am well pleased. Can I get an amen? amen. Poppy, come and tell us why you're going to be baptised. Let's welcome her to the platform. Well done. Keep it going. She's nervous. Okay, Poppy. Okay, um, hi everyone. Um, <laughs> so, I, I didn't have an easy childhood. With one parent estranged and the other not there at times when I needed, I spent a lot of my years growing up feeling like I didn't deserve a place in this world. By the time I was 18, all I could think about was just how much I hated myself. To try and, try and feel something other than that, I turned to drinking, partying and self-destructive behaviour. This didn't work. I then found myself in a relationship that was a reflection of how I felt about myself. This led to the darkness fully consuming me. Deep in depression, feeling trapped and scared, I had accepted that this was the life I deserved. I then one day just had an opportunity to leave, and I got up, I packed my bags and went. I felt the strength in me that day I didn't know I had. I look back now and I know it was God who saved me. After this, I moved to Australia to go heal and started to go to church with a friend. As I explored a relationship with God, I felt my self-destructive tendencies going. I no longer wanted a drink to forget everything I'd been through, and the darkness and hatred I felt started going. I now know and believe that Jesus loves me. I finally show myself self-respect as a human being, something I'd never done before. After hearing so many inspiring testimonies here at this church, I truly believe in the power of Jesus. I also have never experienced kindness and acceptance the way I have at this church. I want to thank Jesus for still saving me all those years, even when I didn't know who he was. Thanks to him, I now know there is another way in life, and I feel free from my past. I am so ready to give myself over fully to Jesus and continue on this journey. Let's pray together, shall we? If you'd like to, reach out a hand of blessing, um, just as a sign that you're, you're praying along as well. Uh, loving Father God, we thank you for Poppy. We thank you for her amazing story. We thank you for the way in which, even before she knew that you knew her, you were holding her and you were calling her to yourself. Thank you that she's now able to recognise that. Lord, we pray abundant blessing over Poppy as she now comes to be baptised and in the coming days, weeks, months, as years, as you continue the journey of sanctification and transformation that is the adventure of living our lives for Jesus. Bless her in abundance, we pray, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, I was warm today. That's good. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? The answers are just below, which is quite helpful. Okay. Do you declare Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? I do. Poppy, do you turn from sin and all the things that tarnish your life and the life of others? I do. 
With the help of the Holy Spirit living within you, do you intend to follow Christ, his teaching, and his example? I do. Will you live within the fellowship of the church, serving Jesus, our King, in the world? I will. Fantastic. If you come over here, put your feet into the corner there, cross your arms over your chest. That's great. Okay. Uh, and bend your knees. That's great. Try and blow out as you go under the water. Okay, that's just a bit of advice there. Poppy, having heard of your repentance and faith, I now baptise you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's pray and when I'm finished praying, do jump in. Loving Father God, we thank you for this precious daughter, Poppy. Thank you that you are looking upon her and saying, that is my girl. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that that will become an absolute reality. That it would not be a doubt within Poppy's mind that she would know herself to be a beloved daughter of a perfect dad. And I pray in this moment but that your Holy Spirit would come and fill her from the bottom of her toes to the top of her head. I pray that she would know the presence of the Holy Spirit working within her. Lord, I pray that you would empower and equip her for the life that you are calling her to, that you would reveal and bring about your giftings within her life. Lord, I, I pray that you would empower and equip her to serve your church and the name of Jesus Christ in her generation powerfully. Holy Spirit, come equip and empower this young woman of God. Bless her in abundance, we pray. Amen. So, beloved daughter of Almighty God, be blessed in abundance. Walk in God's ways. Follow his paths. Turn to him in good times and bad. And I pray that by his Holy Spirit, you would know that he is with you, he is for you, and that he loves you all the days of your life and on into eternity. Be blessed in abundance in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's hear it for Poppy. Oh my goodness, I love the baptism. I should though, shouldn't I? I am a Baptist minister. As you, as you come in, above the door it does say Melton Mowbray Baptist Church, and it is in the title. Okay. I'm going to read to you from 1 Peter. Uh, it's 1 Peter 1 from verse 3. Uh, if you've got your Bible with you, have a little flick around. If you've not, don't feel guilty. I'm going to read it out so it's absolutely fine. I'm going to go all the way from verse 3 to verse 9. It says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inher inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who by faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a time, while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right. Uh, I love coffee. I love it. I absolutely love coffee. It makes me very, very uh, happy and I drink a lot of coffee. I'm having to cut down because I drink so much of it. 
Uh, when Rose and I first got married, uh, I don't know if you've done a, a wedding list at John Lewis, but it is dreamy. Uh, they give you a little machine that you can go around John Lewis and you can just fire at the barcodes and it adds it to the wedding list. And we were of the opinion, well, let's be as cheeky as we like, it, it's up to people what they choose to get us, okay? So we put some, you know, lower items, but then we did, you know, put the items that cost 10,000 pounds on there. One of the more cheekier items that we didn't think anyone would get us was a very special coffee machine. Now, it was a special coffee machine because it had an alarm clock on it and it ground its own beans and then it fell into the filter paper and it started making it off the timer. Okay, it was a brilliant machine, Philips machine. It's only just died on us and we're coming up to being married for 10 years now. Um, so it's, it, it, it did us a good stint. But the best thing about this machine, by far and away, by far and away, was laying in bed in the morning as the aroma of coffee from downstairs drifted up the stairs and into our bedroom. And friends, even though I wasn't yet drinking that coffee, let me tell you, I was receiving the joy of that coffee because I knew it was coming. I could smell the potential of it coming. I, I knew that I would have to go through the pain of getting my feet out from under our warm duvet and in our first house we didn't turn on the heating, did we? At all for a whole winter, very silly, uh, I wish we maybe had. Um, I'd have to get out from the two duvets that we had and, and I'd have to go through the pain of walking down the steps in the cold before I'd actually get the joy of the coffee. But when I smelt the aroma, it was as though part of the joy of what was to come was already delivered to me. Uh, Poppy, you have passed through the waters of baptism. Jesus has called you into his family and he has got a promise for you, as he has for anyone who calls upon his name, that one day when he returns we will be part of his family forever. And that we will know the full transformation of our souls. We will know what it is to be truly separated from the effects of sin, from the desires of sin. We will actually be 100% the person that God created us to be. That is the promise. That is the promise to all of us. But Peter in this letter, what he does is he tells us the truth. He says, until we get there, we're going to suffer a whole lot. He said, there's going to be trials. There's going to be difficult seasons. And Poppy, today's a brilliant day. Today's a really good day. But I'm sorry to tell you that the realities of life are not denied you simply because you've gone through this paddling pool that lives under our stage. It's not even going to be denied to you, even though, just because you've decided to follow Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, you need to pick up your cross. The promise is not that the storms of life won't hit, but rather when the storms of life hit, you have the inexpressible joy and hope that can see you through the storms of life. That can continue to allow you to call on faith. And as you call on faith through suffering, your faith is becoming more gleaming than gold. More precious than anything you can even imagine. And the reason that you can walk through these trials is the same reason is that I'll get out from under those two duvets and walk down the stairs in the freezing cold and pour two cups of coffee before running back upstairs so I can drink them in their wholeness. It is that the aroma of the joy and the hope of what is to come is calling back from the future into the here and now, the reality of the kingdom of God. The aroma of the fullness of the kingdom of God is calling you forward. You are receiving the purification of your soul today that will be completed into eternity. And that is true for all of you, friends. I want to say to you today, God did not promise to take away the trials. In Jesus' uh, great parable, the, uh, the wise and foolish builder, one guy builds his house upon the rock. That is uh, doing what Jesus has said in the Sermon on the Mount. The other guy, he builds his life on the sand. That's someone who's listened to the Sermon on the Mount and doesn't do any of it. 
There's one thing that happens universally to both of them. The storm's coming. The storm is coming. The trial is coming. The tribulation is coming. It's a universal experience. It's what it means to live in a world that's fallen. However, your life is on solid rock. If you enact the things that Jesus tells you through his word, and if you live your life out in the community of faith, that is the church, and if you commit yourself to the act of sanctification that the Holy Spirit will bring about within you, your life will stand, and more than this, your life will stand into eternity. The aroma of what is already happened is hitting your nose here today, and it will sustain you and allow you to walk through all kinds of trials and tribulations. Friends, know your Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, is true to his word. You have been saved, you will be saved, and you are being saved when you call upon his name. He's going to pull you through, and you can have the joy that is to come in the here and now when you trust in that hope. Today, trust in that hope, Poppy, trust in that hope. It will get you through. He is worthy of your faith. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Can I invite the band to come and join me again? We're going to sing uh, in Christ alone uh, together, um, because that seems fitting. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll sing another song. And then I think we'll spend some time being able to just chat and share with one another. Um, make sure that we can make a fuss of poppy. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ reach from the past to change your today and tomorrow. May his return reach from the future to bring you hope in the midst of trial and celebration so that you can continue on the path that Christ has called you to and that your faith may be proved more pure than gold and that you would shine like a star in the resurrection of the living and the dead. I pray that each one of you by the Holy Spirit would not just know that you have a place at the table but would experience it as a reality. Today, through this week, and always, in the powerful name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Chat with each other. Let's have a nice time together. Make a fuss of poppy.